I just want to uh, say a couple words. I've had the pleasure of getting to know Marcus a little bit more over the last year. We've done a few events together, and um, he's just fantastic. You guys are going to fall in love by the by the time this is over, if you're not already in love with him. And um, he, he's just fantastic. And and. He's won so many awards, I can't even go into all the awards. If you guys watch, you know, Top Chef Masters, you know who he is, right? If you watch, uh, yeah, I'm applauding. <laughs> if you, um, has anybody been to any of his restaurant, uh, Red Rooster in Harlem in New York? Okay, you need to go. I'm just telling you, right now, it is fabulous. And Jeannie's Supper Club, which I just went to when I was there three weeks ago. Um, his restaurants are terrific. He's got a restaurant in Sweden he'll tell you about. Uh, so many other projects. But I just want to briefly say, and he's going to do a book signing. This book, I just started reading it a few, uh, literally a few days ago. It is glorious. I want everybody to pick up a copy. I, I am about a third of the way through. You're a beautiful writer. So as, a, as an author of books, I applaud you. It is wonderful, absolutely wonderful. It tells the story of his upbringing, it tells, which he can articulate better than me, but I'm gonna hand it off, Marcus Samuelson. Wonderful. It's a lot of fun to be here. That how about that dinner last night, right? Woo! A lot of fun. And I didn't do the tequila shot. I should have done that, baby. I was, I was scared. There's always I was tonight. Scared. I was scared about today. I want to do my cooking class. So uh, love the wife that was up here. Absolutely fantastic. And it also gave me um, the most expensive sauce I've ever made. <laughs> that that was, you know, I was like snip and a little bit to uh, the sauce, but you guys gotta taste this, you deserve that. So, my restaurant, Red Rooster, next time you come to New York, it's in the north, northern Manhattan, it's in Harlem. And uh, I started really my cooking in Sweden, I started to cook with my grandmother. And it is funny that I think about when you're a kid, you do stuff with your family, you don't even think about the 10, 15, 20 years later, the techniques that my grandmother taught me but it's the same very techniques that we're using today in the restaurant. For example, if we have, we do roasted chicken. The next day, my grandmother's house was always chicken soup and even chicken dumplings. And today, with comfort food really being the it food, right? Casual dining, comfort food is really being the trendiest food out there. My grandmother, Helga, if she would have been around, would have been a very hip girl and maybe lived in Brooklyn or something like that. So it's kind of funny to, you, you think about it like, wow, you know, I use the same technique. And things that we cooked a lot, yeah, you know, Swedish cuisine is now, Scandinavian cuisine is now becoming very, very popular. You know, you have restaurants in Copenhagen and Stockholm that are really highly rated. But the Swedish cuisine that I was raised from was uh, similar, I can actually imagine, to here in Seattle, a lot of salmon. A lot of seafood, and uh, it was mackerel, we had salmon, we had halibut, scallops, herring, absolutely. And we also, you know, there wasn't sort of a call out for, let's say, farm to table. You go to a trend restaurant now. Like, my grandmother was doing farm to table before even there was a term. We used everything, right? It was fish, it was the fish soup again, and then even fish, fish dumplings. So, that type of cooking techniques. Uh, it's something that I've held on to all my life. I had a chance early to go to France, to go to Georges Blanc, a three-star Michelin uh, rated restaurant. And uh, like a lot of chefs, we always wanted to go to France. We always wanted to go there, but you know, I still think America is actually the most exciting place to cook for a chef because audience and people are very diverse. They have different backgrounds. So I do think that American cooking right now is actually, this is where it's at. So thank you guys for always coming out. And my link to that is actually by having events like this. You know, when I came to the States, it was maybe Aspen Food and Wine, and uh, maybe a couple of two, two or three other uh, food and wine experiences. Now the food and wine experiences are all over the country, and they're so good, and they're bringing speakers, and chefs, and winemakers, um, and it's really important because the more you know, people get into become wineries and foodies and all this stuff, 
you know, the better the chef will respond, it creates better and better restaurants. And I think that's, as you get started cooking, I think that's really, we are finally at the point in America where we do have a culture yes. of local food and local wine. Now, granted, in, the, in certain spots in the middle of the country, I go all over, you don't find it as much as maybe on the coasts, but yeah. but we are we are there. I yeah, no, are. absolutely. And, and now, you know, the European chefs are coming to the States to check out what's going on, and that's something that I think is a lot of, a lot of fun, and we inspire each other. Um, the dish that I'm going to make today, I'm going to make a fried chicken. And uh, you can't open a restaurant in Harlem and don't consider, you can't walk around the chicken. And I was intimidated by this bird, because there's also, let's say there's 500 restaurants in Harlem, I said there's 500,000 people living there. There's about 200,000 fried chicken experts. Every auntie, every mother, every person that knows how to do it, and they know how to do it best. It's like, you know, doing barbecue in Texas or something like that, right? Everyone has an opinion. So I was thinking about Wait, that. You are the only place in Harlem that serves Swedish meatballs. I am, I know that. That one wasn't hard. That one wasn't hard. And ramen, also ramen, I said ramen. <laughs> Probably the most expensive ramen in, in, in Harlem, but it's a good ramen, you know? But, so, how can you take, how can you have a take on a dish that is so classical and really has a DNA, almost terror like wine, to a community? So I was thinking about that, you know? And I tasted a lot of uh, yard bird, we call it fried yard bird. And we really thought about how can we do it differently? You know, and I went back to really my grandmother's technique, because, um, so my chicken starts a little bit different. Um, but the attitude of my fried chicken, it really is something I want you guys to walk away with here. So I want you to do it church style. I really want you to shake the person's hand right next to you, and you should say, my fried chicken is better than yours. <laughs> yes. And by the time we're done, by the time we're done, I'm not going to do that because mine isn't better than yours. But my idea about that, that's the type of attitude, that's the type of shift that you have to have if you're going to go into Uptown Manhattan and do fried yard work.